guys, welcome back to a new vlog. It's been a while since I've vlogged. I'm sorry y'all, I've just been having like a sad girl summer. <laughs> But I think I'm doing all right now. So I took another wee break there that I didn't mean to take, but I feel like it was necessary and I'm not gonna dwell on it. It was kind of shit, but I think I'm doing all right now. So I'm back to vlogging. It is Friday though, and it's actually Friday the 13th, which is like, ooh, spooky. I am quite a superstitious person. So hopefully I won't get any like bad luck from my way today. But yeah, it's Friday, so I'm already starting this vlog like super late. So I'm guessing this is gonna be like an extended weekend vlog. I am hoping to get a lot of reading done over this weekend, like fingers crossed, um, starting with today. I have a book that I'm so excited to read. Um, but do I have anything to catch you up with actually first? <laughs> anything exciting happened to me in the last couple of weeks since I've not been vlogging? No. <laughs> Oh, although I did go see It Chapter 2 at cinema with Massey and oh, it was so good. I loved it. There were some changes from the book which were necessary, although I wish we had had like a turtle or two in there somewhere. But obviously the ending couldn't be the same, but I thought it was hilarious. Like the humour was funny to me. I love horror movies, but this one was like extra comedic. I just, I really liked that. But yeah, that's basically all that's happened in the last couple of weeks. I haven't really been reading that much. Oh, newts though, um, July, um, I did pretty well. I managed to get all the newts. I actually, was it G's? Was it yesterday or the day before? The day before yesterday, we were playing D&D and she printed me off my diploma. I'm gonna have to go get the diploma now to show everybody, but I have cat on my knee. So can you come back in five? It's not leaving. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bella, you, you can perch up there, okay. Don't hate me. Diploma. I don't actually know where my actual like uni diploma is, but I'm gonna frame this one. <laughs> Goes to show you how much I care really about my degree that I have not got any use out of. Not bitter about that at all. <laughs> and yesterday, nope, the day before yesterday, I did film my wheel of TBR. So I'm actually gonna post that today, but I have a whole new set of books to read and currently the one that I need to finish, like I have been dragging my feet with is Dark Dawn by J. Kristoff. I legit could have read this in a day, but I have been stopping myself because I've been savoring it. I've also not really been in that much of a reading mood this last week. I've um, not really been any like in a slump or anything, but I've just been watching a lot of like Netflix, not gonna lie. But yeah, I've been savoring this. I have the last 100 pages to go and oh my God, I love this so much. I haven't finished it yet because I'm scared I'm gonna cry and I was already like, sad girl summer vibes so i haven't picked it up and finished out that last hundred pages but this is so good i love how mia is developing like she's still very very angry like she was in the first book never night but oh her character growth the family dynamics in here there's so much humor that i just love like it is quite crude but i love it i like the whole like lad lad lads thing when the female characters just can like one up that ladsmanship and put the men in their place and there's female characters in this definitely do that. I don't know if that made any sense. But basically, this is making me laugh and tearing up my heartstrings all at the same time. So many like revelations in here and Mia being flawed like she is, which I love about her, has made some uh, questionable decisions. But I'm excited to see what happens at the end of this. There's so much that Jay Kristoff has been hinting at in the first two books that are finally being revealed, coming to fruition. Plot points are coming to their close and oh my God, also this has had me like tearing up a couple of times and I've not even got to the end yet so like pray for me. <laughs> I also love that even though it's very plot driven and action packed we are getting to know our characters a lot better in this book and it also talks a lot about grief which I think has been done very well and also like there's like a found family which oh, I just I just love love this book need to finish this book I'm gonna finish it today I'm gonna get my reaction on camera. <laughs> oh but actually last night I picked up uh, House of Salt and Sorrows as well by Erin A. Craig because I wanted to get my reaction to the end of that gone on camera because I know a lot of people have been doing that and I just I want to know if I'm gonna cry <laughs> and my reaction might make for good content I don't know but yeah so I picked up this one instead of finishing that one last night and I really like this one so far how far am I into it I think I got over 100 pages last night yeah I'm like 130 pages into it already this was such a fast read and I love how creepy it is I didn't know just how atmospheric and creepy this would be but I'm living for it especially now that it's like September and I'm feeling all spooky and shit. 
yeah, I really like it. If you didn't know what this one's about, I know it's been hyped just now, or it has been hyped. It came out pretty recently, I think. In this one, we follow a girl called Anna Lay, and she lives in a manor by the sea. Her dad is quite well off, but her mum died when she, like six years ago or something. So he's got a new wife. And also she has 11 sisters, or she had 11 sisters, but the three or four of them have already passed away. And we start off at the, right at the beginning of this book with the funeral of the most recent deceased sister. She fell off a cliff basically. So they all seem like deaths that are being caused by disease or just like accidents and stuff but everybody in this like island town I guess um thinks that this family is cursed so that's where this picks up and then it gets spooky and weird and I really like it I feel like there's going to be some romance in here because already we have all these young girls together talking about how they want to find boyfriends and go to balls and dance with boys and um, that's basically all they really want in life but they've been in mourning for so long because every year they lose another sibling basically so their father hasn't really let them do that but now he's got this new wife and he said okay that's enough of the mourning so they're going to balls and stuff to hopefully meet boys but obviously everyone thinks that they're cursed so the boys aren't really gonna want to date someone who's cursed so they're having a hard time and yeah um spooky vibes i'm not going to tell you why because it's not really in the synopsis um but stuff's happening and la is going to have to get to the bottom of it i don't know where this story is going to go which is surprising me because usually with a ya fantasy from the beginning i can kind of gather where i think that the plot's going to go after i've read like the first 100 pages or whatever with this one i'm not sure so yes i really like this so far so mm, I need to read this one too, but first priority is Dark Dawn. I will probably share with you the rest of the TBR um, officially, like in tomorrow's clip, update, whatever. Or I can just link it if you wanna see everything. There are a couple of polls in there though. There's the Twitter pick and then the poll in the actual video. So there's two books that I don't know if what I'm gonna be reading until like a week has passed. But I do have some cool options this month that I'm reading. Also, I'll be doing the contemporary thon at the end of the month as well. So I've been trying to prioritize the fantasy over any contemporary or thrillers. Although I do need to solidify that TBR because I haven't really looked at the challenges properly. I remember what some of them are, but I might end up adding in extra books because I need to fit those prompts. Also, I'm supposed to be reading A Feast for Crow for the A Song of Ice and Fire read along and I've only listened to like the first hour so I need to get a jump on that too but yeah I'm gonna shut up because this is a lengthy intro already and I am actually gonna go out and get some reading snacks because I am planning on doing a lot of reading today as I said so I need to get some what's the word rations no rations not the word provisions <laughs> reading fuel basically it's just my fuel for everything I'm constantly snacking I love to eat so I'm gonna go get some snacks come back and then and I'm going to upload my TBR video just so that it's on YouTube because my laptop's been giving me some issues as always. So as long as it's on there, I can post it later today and I'm gonna read this. So let's do it. Hey my dudes, I'm back from the shop. I covered all my bases. Bases? Bases. Bases. <sighs> What? I got salty, I got some McCoys. I got the best McCoys, which is sizzling king prawn. Fight me. I got myself some chocolate biscuits. These are the best chocolate biscuits for dipping in tea. Again, fight me. Wow, what's with the aggression today? Anyway, and sweet, I got chew -its. I got the original strawberry ones. I haven't had them in years. And I didn't know, but they now do cola flavored chew -its. So I'm gonna taste test these. The taste test nobody asked for. But whilst I popped out to the shop, which is literally five minutes away, so like I only listened to five minutes. I should have listened to Feast for Crows, but I didn't. I instead downloaded the audiobook for I'll Be Gone in the Dark, which is on the TBR this month. It's a true crime about the Golden State Killer. And I've just listened to the first five minutes and I'm already hooked. And it didn't really even get into the proper story. It was just the introduction mostly that I listened to by, um, from Gillian Flynn. And already <laughs> I need to just compulsively listen to this. But yeah, that was kind of a mistake, wasn't it? Starting listening to this when I have Dark Dawn, I need to prioritize today. But oh my god, already I can tell I'm going to absolutely love this. And at the beginning of this book, Gillian Flynn does say that the Golden State Killer hasn't been found. It's still unsolved cases. 
But I'm pretty sure when I've talked about this book before, some people have commented and said that the Golden State Killer has now been found. But like, sadly, it was after Michelle McNamara's death. So part of me wants to Google that. But if I put in Golden State Killer, I'm going to find out who that is, right, straight away on Google. So wouldn't it be better for me not to Google it and find out in case it is a suspect in here and then I can find out the truth afterwards? I think I'm gonna do it that way. <laughs> but yeah, this is great so far. But like I said, probably about five to 10 minutes I've listened to this. I'm starting on 1.25 speed. I have graduated from one, one times speed, like normal speed, still can't handle two times speed. 1.5, 1.75 is like my comfort zone with most audiobooks I've been listening to, not that I've been listening to a lot, but for true crime at the beginning especially, I'm going with 1.25. Anyway, you don't care. I am going to um, read that Dawn, but I'm also going to upload my Wheel of TBR video at the same time. So I'm going to go get snuggled down with my snacks, put the kettle on. Also, I'll probably have a cat with me because they've been really needy today. I don't know what's wrong with them. They just keep following me around the house. Maybe they're hungry. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I'll shut up. Oh, I've not vlogged in like two weeks and then I'm just being like overly chatty and y'all don't care. I, am yep, I will give you thoughts on Dark Dawn as I read it. <laughs> Literally as soon as I got on the blank, well under the blanket, the cat arrived. <laughs> so I'm gonna let him snuggle down and then I'm gonna continue with Dark Dawn. I have my video uploading, I've got a cup of tea, I have the snacks. So I'm gonna actually try these bad boys. <laughs> okay, weirdly, they are pink and not brown, like I expected, but here goes. So just cola flavored sweets. I don't know what I was expecting there. Literally tastes like every cola sweet you could possibly ever have, like a Mawam, for example. It's basically the same thing. It's good. I'd rate it four out of five. Could be a bit more flavorful. Yep. <laughs> so I'm sure that made for thrilling content. Now I'm gonna read. Okay, so I'm now on book five, the last part. Shit's about to hit the fan and I'm so nervous about what's gonna happen. We all kind of know what's gonna happen, but don't know because he's been playing tricks on us throughout this book i've been loving i forgot to say earlier i've been loving how he's been breaking down the fourth wall in this book especially in the footnotes i love the footnotes personally in this series and it's been a little bit meta like i don't know if i'm using that term correctly i think so but it's, i've just been loving how he's been like talking to the audience and i'm hoping there's a little bit more of that to come i'm assuming at the end i'm also really hoping that our particular character comes back into the story a bit more towards the end of this but we'll see oh i'm so nervous okay i'm just i'm just gonna do it i'm just gonna do it <laughs> Okay, I didn't fully cry, but I did tear up at the end of this, and oh, Jay Kristoff has a lot to answer for. I see everyone's, I now know why everyone reacted the way they did to this ending. I loved this book, five stars. I thought it was wrapped up really well. Um, there was one thing that I didn't like about it too much, but if I discussed that, that would be a huge spoiler, so I won't do that. But yeah, it's still a five star book. You know, book is perfect, but what an end to an amazing series. I'm so sad it is over. I'm so sad it's over. I think he crafted this really well. And 
oh my god I didn't think I cared for Mia as much as I did <laughs> but turns out I really cared for Mia so yeah like in the first book I just didn't feel that connection with her but obviously seeing her grow through the series she's one of my favorite characters definitely this book has so much that I love and I think all his like breaking down the fourth wall and talking directly to the reader was done so well in this and it's definitely a love story to the written word in a way Oh, I just I just loved it so much but yeah that's pretty much uh, all I want to say about that right now because I'm still feeling a little bit emotional a little bit hurt but yeah I'm now going to upload my Wheel of TBR video and then later tonight I will carry on with House of Salt and Sorrow so I'll probably update you tomorrow now because for most of this evening I'll probably be responding to people um, in the comments on the video and then also getting back to people on Twitter and stuff because I haven't really gone on Twitter this whole time um, so yeah I've got some people to catch up with and I've got to rejoin the world so that's the plan and I'll give you an update and let you know my thoughts when I've read some more of this. Hey my dudes, happy Saturday. So I just popped out into town because I had my next therapy session today but he cancelled at the last minute, he had like a family emergency, so I was just in town um, for no reason basically, and it's like pretty awful outside, it's like really really windy, so I didn't stay there for long. Just grabbed a Greg's for me and Massey and came straight back home. I also didn't end up reading this last night as I expected to. I think I was just really anxious about posting my TBR, which went really well, people seemed to like it, so thank you to everybody who's left me lovely comments on there. I tried getting back to a few people and some stuff on Twitter I needed to get back with, well, respond to, and and then my headache got really bad so I just went to bed. <laughs> and today I could have been reading when I got back from town but I didn't. I was watching Fleabag with Massey because we hadn't watched all of season two and I love that show but yeah I'm planning on reading a bit of this now. I've got about an hour or two before I need to go around to G's because we have the next D&D &D campaign today. I'm excited. My character's also leveled up so I need to figure out what new spells to add to my arsenal if you will. So that's gonna be good. I don't know how long we'll be there for. Probably a good few hours playing that and then when I get home like I said I will continue with this. Oh, also whilst I was out, I was listening to more of the audiobook of I'll Be Gone in the Dark. I've listened to about an hour of it now and it's it's really, really good. I do want to maybe switch to physical though and read it a little bit more because I feel like I missed things whilst I was out. Um, town was just really noisy, like the bus was noisy. I kept having to adjust the volume and stuff. So I feel like I've missed crucial things. So I might go back and reread it physically, but loving that any true crime fans out there if you haven't already tried that one i'm really liking it so far but yeah i'm gonna go get back to this now i loved the creepiness in the first 100 pages that i read of this also i didn't think i mentioned yesterday there's been like the introduction of gods as like a whole different religious system in here and this family because they live like on the sea essentially on an island they worship the god of the sea and there's something to do with that now coming into play so i'm excited i also know this is a retelling of the 12 dancing sisters story which i wasn't aware of so i'm gonna look that up as well while before well, before i continue with this i don't know if that would that be a spoiler i'll maybe look that up afterwards but yeah i'm gonna stop blathering on make myself a cup of tea read this for a bit and then figure out what new spells i'm gonna add to my arsenal as I said as a wizard because I've got some good ones but we could really do with some that are like good against vampires because it's like an undead storyline there's like a vampire in a castle it's it's very creepy it's very cool I really like it but yeah I will catch up with you probably later tonight when I get back from D&D if not tomorrow and tomorrow I'm planning on doing a lot of reading and also some bullet journaling hopefully too because I did do a spread for August which I never showed you guys but I didn't really get that far with it and we're like halfway through September and I haven't even started my September spread yet but I've been loving it recently I've done a little bit more so need to set up for September but yeah Gonna go make this cup of tea, read for a bit. So, but, no, so there's lots, lots of rapid attacks with yeah. the fighter, but Barbarian, you've also got the fact that you don't have to work. Hello, so it's now Sunday. I had a lot of fun last night playing D&D, round at G's with the gang. Such a fun time. We were there till like 
I want to say 10 o'clock ish and then when I came home I did read quite a lot of this in fact I only have about 50 pages left I did have to stop myself reading last night because I really wanted to get to sleep and it was getting late. Ironically, I didn't get to bed till like 4 a.m. Well, off to sleep till around 4 or 5 a.m. I just could not sleep. What the hell? Like, I woke up today really late. I woke up at like noon. Massey made us some lunch because he's the best. But I'm just feeling it a bit, I don't know. My anxiety levels are quite high today. I think that's just because I didn't get enough sleep. <laughs> well, I did, but it was just weird time to sleep. Just messed with my sleeping pattern a bit, but like I totally could have read this last night and finished it out. I was loving it. This was very compulsive. I was completely engaged in the story. I really liked the characters. The mystery definitely was so good. Like I said, um, I've got the last 50 pages. So it's getting wrapped up now. We have basically figured out what is happening with these sisters. And I did kind of know what was happening or I had an inkling because yesterday I did say that this was based on the 12 Dancing Sisters story. And I thought I didn't know anything about that. Turns out one of my favorite books I've read this year, which is actually a graphic novel, includes a retelling of that story. So that all came back to me and I was like, oh, okay. I know what's happening. I'll just show you what graphic novel I mean. This one, 100 Nights of Hero by Isabel Greenberg. I love this. It's a lot of different short stories, but the 12 Dancing Sisters does make like an appearance in here and they're all based around sister relationships. Love this, five stars, read it. <laughs> but yeah, so all that came back to me. So I wasn't really all that shocked and surprised when we found out what exactly was happening with these girls. However, we're finding out like now who is behind it all and I am quite disappointed in that because I had so many suspects I was so intrigued this was beyond creepy and I loved it it was a lot darker than I expected with all these like sinister deaths that are happening and there's a lot of romance in here but like I've never really cared for romance in fantasy. It's fine. I don't hate it. It's just there. It's fine. But I started to like this less once we found out who was behind this whole situation because there wasn't enough foreshadowing for this to happen. Like, I sound like such a hypocrite because usually I'm like, oh, a, sh a book needs to shock me, surprise me for, me for me to enjoy it. And an ending and a mystery especially, I want to be shocked. However, on the flip side, I don't like it when they just throw something at you, when an author throws the antagonist at you and you haven't really had an opportunity to guess it. I'm trying to be vague and not spoil for this book, but I, I just feel a little bit let down by who's behind it all, honestly. It does include like a lot of stuff to do with gods, which I love in a book, you know that if you've watched my channel for a while, it's one of my favourite things in fantasy. So there's a lot of things I do like about this. I, yeah, I can totally see why everybody else loves it, but I have, a, I have still got that last 50 pages, so maybe it will redeem itself. I really do like all the sister friend, well, relationships in here too. But yeah, the whole mystery element has kind of been spoiled for me now just because I didn't even have an opportunity to be slightly right. You know, I'd, I'm trying not to spoil it. Um, I would still recommend it to people. But, oh, I don't know, let me know your thoughts on this ending. Like, I haven't even actually finished it yet, so that is the main priority for today. It's around, like, four o'clock now. I, yeah, I could have been reading today. I wasn't. I got up really late, and then I've just been trying to catch up on some booktube, because whilst I was away, whilst I wasn't posting for those two weeks, I wasn't watching that much booktube. I think it's because, like, booktube is my happy place usually, so I just love watching videos, but when I wasn't posting myself, every time I'd watch a booktube video, I'd, I'd just feel really bad. I'd be like, oh, you should be posting. Why aren't you posting? And I'd just like, it would make my mental health worse. I don't know if that makes any sense. But basically, I need to catch up on a lot of booktube. So that's what I was doing today. What I needed to talk to you about. Okay, yes, I want to talk to you about Dark Dawn again, because I just gave you like a reaction when I finished it. And I was like, oh, five stars, loved it, made me cry. <laughs> right? But it's been a couple of days now and I've been thinking about this book a lot and I don't think it is a five star book for me. I think it's more of a 4.5 and that's because I was just so in it as I was reading it. So a lot of the stuff that bothered me, I didn't really care about in the moment. But since I finished it, there's some stuff that has bugged me about this book. And in fact, it was when I was talking to G and Logan about this yesterday, because um, G has yet to read this and Logan's going to be reading it soon, I think. And they, they were talking to me about the ending of God's Grave. And if you know, you know. And they said to me, well, she said to me that she didn't really like certain things in God's Grave. And I said, well, I'm not really sure how you're going to feel about Dark Dawn then. <laughs> and yeah, it does include some tropes that are my most hated tropes. 
in books just in general. Sometimes an author can do something really unique with it and that's fine, this didn't feel all that unique in that respect but this was just so humorous in the same time, like Jay Kristoff basically takes a piss a little bit out of his own writing in this, which was just really nice to see. I don't know, maybe it's because he's Australian, I just really vibe with his humour, his comedy. Um, but there's some things, like I said, that I didn't love about this. Um, for example, it's wrapped up so quickly. Um, there's like a penultimate scene which felt a little bit ridiculous, like it was giving me kind of um, Cassandra Clare's book vibes which book was it i think was it queen of air and darkness something like that it gave me that kind of vibe um and i didn't love that book in fact that was one of my most disappointing i think of last year it was in no way as ridiculous as the cassandra clare book in my opinion my opinion humble opinion <laughs> But yeah, that kind of bummed me out. And then also the ending of this, I think I said like Jay Kristoff has a lot to answer for. I did like it, but it's not my favorite kind of ending. So I will just say that. So yeah, just in case you're wanting to try this, um, just know it's not like a perfect five star book in my eyes. I think it is more of a 4.5, even though it did get an emotional reaction from me because it's the third in a series. I think I'm always more lenient on a continuation in a series, like a second or a third book, as opposed to a first book. And I think that's just because I have grown attached to these characters and the story by that point. So I just don't, I'm not as critical, I guess. So that's what I wanted to say about that one. Sorry, that was really rambly. <laughs> but yeah, as I said, I only have 50 pages left of this. Gonna read that now. And then Massey and I need to pop out to do a big shop <laughs> for Tesco's because it's Sunday. So we need to get some food in for the week. And then when I come home, I'm gonna read something else. I think I might pick up The Familiar because I'm just so eager to try it. I will grab it. <laughs> Oh, I hit myself in the face with it. But this one, um, this one's a graphic novel kind of, well, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> Cody, what are you talking about? It's not a graphic novel. <laughs> it's just got mixed media in it. That's basically what I meant. Okay, so it's by Mark Z. Danielowski. I don't know anything about this one. I think it's quite character driven. There's a lot of different characters though and different timelines and things. But basically it has the mixed media. I did read House of Leaves. I didn't love it, but I really like the weird formatting. I really like books that I quirky and weird in their writing style. For example, S by J.J. Abrams and Doug Dost. That is one hell of a ride, that book, but I loved it. So I think that's going to be what I'm going to pick up next. I, it might take me a while, you know, because even even though it does have like a lot of pages that don't have much text, I can imagine it's gonna be a mind fuck, so I'm probably gonna have to take my time with it in that respect. I also will show you my bullet journal at some point today as well. I do still have to do like one more page, like my, well no, two more pages for August that I never did, like I planned them out but I didn't actually do them and then set up for September and I could do that while listening to the audio book for, where is it gone? <laughs> so many books right in front of me this one been loving the audiobook for this I, I haven't listened to that much more than when the last time I told you about it but I might listen to this and do some um journaling too so I'll let you know about well I'll let you see that later I'm quite proud of the page that I did for August there's not a lot but I thought I'd show you anyway I know some people like to see that this clip has been so long so I'm going to shut the hell up and read the last 50 pages of this and then I'll let you know right now it's feeling like a four star read like it could have been a five, y'all. It could have been a five. There were some so many creepy parts in this where I was literally on the edge of my seat. I was like, whoa, this actually feels like I'm watching a horror movie. And I really liked that. Uh, but now I don't, I don't know. So yeah, I'll finish it. I'll let you know. Okay, so before I read, I figured I'd just show you this because the lighting isn't great in here. Like, because it's already like five o'clock-ish. And so I put the ring light on. <laughs> but I'll just give you a little flip through. So... I uh, started off with May. May was terrible. Let's just ignore May happened. But June was all right. I have my month at a glance, my Wheel of TBR spread for that month, and then a couple of weekly spreads. This seems to be a theme with me. I can't seem to do weekly spreads for a whole month. I don't know why. I highly use them. That's probably why. And then we come into July, which theme was made because I was participating in the book junkie trials that month. So I had my month at a glance. It was a good posting month for me um, because of the reading rush. I was posting, well, I was trying to post daily vlogs. So quite a lot were posted. This is basically like my month at a glance is just posting, well, sorry, just tracking my posts um, online. My YouTube videos, that's like the only thing I use it for, essentially. But I have like readathons and then 
what I want to film, etc. And then I have my Wheel of TBR for that month um, with the prompts, titles and ratings of all the books. I managed to read, I think, pretty much all of them. Yeah, all of them in July. So that was good. Then I had my map for the Book Junkie Trials. Um, I, yeah, I have since put the names of the books I read for the prompt so I followed the mage path so I have all the books I read there um I like this page it's fun it could have been better but it was fun <laughs> then I had my book haul oh my god look how many books I got for my birthday this is like bonkers bananas I did have a page counter as you can see I didn't carry on with it <laughs> I don't know, July was just a crazy month. Like, I think my bullet journal definitely reflects how I've been feeling these last few months. Like, my mental health has been everywhere, so I just haven't been tracking certain stuff. I just fall off the radar, don't I? So, yeah. Then I had um, a couple of weeks, um, the first couple of weeks in September. Well, no, what month is this? July. I did the first couple of weeks for that. As you can see, like, I used it kind of in the first week, and in the second week, I didn't really use it at all but I have like books read and then I have um, my little mood trackers are pretty cool though that I did like I did like potion bottles for the theme and then like candles here which I quite liked that but then moving on to the newts august I really like this first page that I did like my introductory page if you will um yeah so this is my little doodle of hogwarts and hedwig basically any illustrations that I've done have been copied from pictures online guys like these are not my original ideas if you type in Harry Potter, Harry Potter bullet journal onto um, Google you'll find this kind of stuff I'm a bit bummed at myself for putting this like water down here and trees like I wish I hadn't done that but I was pretty happy with how this turned out so oh what I will say though is you'll notice um, like a lot of these like the colors come through the page like you can still see on certain pages like basically everything comes through the pages with these pens that I'm using which I do like these pens and it's not as bad as the ones I used to use but still so to try and make August a bit neater I've literally just like done this so I'm just going to glue those together <laughs> but then my month at a glance I kind of like as well I tried to do the like Harry Potter text and um, it could have been a bit like squeezed in together and would probably would look better but as you can see August wasn't a great month for posting um I didn't post that much at all which definitely reflects how I've been doing um do have a little Harry Potter glasses and um lightning bolt little doodle over here this I copied from G's bookmarks I did ask her if I could so I'll just show you what I copied okay so these are the bookmarks that G created for the Magical Readathon. I can't find the one I actually used because I was using it as a bookmark in Dark Dawn and I think I've put it in another book but I can't remember which one. But I'll put a picture on the screen. Um, yeah, I basically copied her doodle of this little ink and quill because I really like how she did it. So I'm excited to show her my copy and see if she thinks that I did a good job. But anyway, I have like to film down here. I filmed some but not all. And then again, I've left these glues together and then I just have my wheel of TBR page which I really like as well and um, that's all I did for August really um but on this one I have prompt title rating again I have all the spins um in order so the first one that came up was classic so I've done little lightning bolts down this side with the colors and it just goes around that way and then I haven't I didn't read all of them for example, Far From the Maddening Crowd, I haven't got a rating for because I'm still reading that. And same goes for A Feast of Crows, still reading that. Um, it's probably going to be a four or five star book because, I mean, it's a reread for me. But I tried to do a wand up here, but I think it could have been longer. And also, I don't really like this handle that I did. I just, whatever. <laughs> so I did a wand and then I've just got like my scroll up here. Um, I've been enjoying trying different like illustrations of scrolls because it kind of fits the theme and then down here I have all the books that I've read this month I colour coded to match whatever prompt however two of these um weren't on my wheel of TBR they're just extras that I read that month for example the Tea Dragon Society and also a Sorcery Thorns as well so I've just colored those in so I have like a little sorting hat here he's cute right I like drawing him and then I have a wow I just completely blanked Mandrake right I mean Mandrake <laughs> which I copied from G's bookmark for Herbology. Um, hers is a lot better, <laughs> obviously, but I'm quite proud of what I did. So yeah, that's all I did for August. And then I need to, I'm gonna again, just glue these pages together because that wheel is definitely like, you can see it so much through there. 
but I need to do an actual newts page and then just click off like tick off the ones I read for each prompt because I have it in a notebook I don't have it in my journal and also just a book haul page I didn't receive a lot of books in August um, or buy any new books really in August but I do have a few that I received after my birthday for my birthday so I'm gonna put that in the August page as well then after that I'm gonna move on to September so once I do that I'll let you know and um, also let me know if you want me to do a proper video I've done one before which was like a flip through and um, once I set up for September I can do that so let me know so yeah that's my bullet journal segment of the vlog um, let me know if you like it if you've got any tips or any equipment you think I should be using etc and any ideas for themes for September I think I'm just going to be a basic bitch and do like the September fall theme autumn theme like lots of autumn leaves and stuff um yeah but I will let you know if in this vlog <laughs> I set that up if not in next week's vlog so I've literally just read one more chapter and I'm back in again. Like I am still kind of annoyed at the whodunit aspect. Like I wish we'd have had more clues basically, but it's gotten trippy again and I don't know what to trust anymore, which was what I was loving before and even more so now. So I've literally just changed my opinion after a chapter, but I will read the rest of the like 40 something pages I have left and I'll let you know, but I'm back in it again now. I was disappointed at the reveal and now I'm like, huh, okay, it's going in another direction. I'm pleased with it. Okay, I will continue. Also, the writing is really good, like the description, the atmosphere, the creepiness. I do like this book. I, can, I feel like I kind of shat on it a little bit, but I'll continue. Okay, I did it and this was good. Okay, this was good. Yes, I was all like, oh, I wish they had just given me some clues as to like who done it throughout it and like foreshadow a little bit. <laughs> I definitely spoke too soon. That's the thing with reading vlogs. I know that was a criticism of a certain someone's um, video about how they don't like reading vlogs. It's the fact that sometimes what you say just ends up being like moot, like halfway through a book because you have all these theories and then nothing pans out. But I quite like hearing people's theories and stuff about books when I've read the book in vlogs, etc. So this is one of those cases where I had 40 pages to go, I thought everything was a little bit underwhelming and unsatisfying, but by the end, I I did really like this. I didn't love the last chapter, like the epilogue, because if you've read it, and you know my reading taste, you'll know why I didn't love, and there's a cat here, you'll know why I didn't love the epilogue, but apart from that, this did mess with your head a little bit, and it was so atmospheric and creepy. I really liked it. I don't think it's gonna be a five star. I mean, it's close. Maybe a 4.75 if I'm being extra picky. I give so many books five stars that I'm trying to be a bit more critical in that respect, but it's, is, is close and maybe I'll just think about it for a few days it might be a five star book but I really recommend this this completely surprised me it did read quite typically YA in a lot of ways but at the same time this was a lot darker than I expected and it did have some twists and turns in here some were a little bit predictable where I rolled my eyes and then others completely took me by surprise even when I thought I knew it was wrapped up in a way that I didn't like it still managed to surprise me by the end so this was cleverly done I really like this. This is a book you can get sucked into. Um, our main character isn't like an annoying typical white <laughs> protagonist or anything. The romance is a little bit cheesy, I will say that, um, but yeah, this was good. I really liked how this wrapped up in the end, so yeah, I think it's a 4.75. I'm so happy I read this one. I really liked this. Okay, so now Massey and I, like I said, are gonna go off to the shop if Bella will move perhaps are you gonna move <laughs> okay i'm gonna stay here for a bit and then we're gonna go off to the shops and then when i get home i might start the familiar or i might do some bullet journaling and listen to i'll be gone in the dark but i will let you know then if not tomorrow so say bye bella <laughs> she looks so annoyed to be on camera okay see you in a bit Okay, it's much later now and I wasn't gonna give you an update, but I feel like I needed to document this. Okay, I am scared, okay? I have an, irrash an irrational fear of spiders because they are the devil's 
biscuits spawn i don't know what devil's biscuits and um massey was looking for the cat's toy which is usually down there um i'll show you in a second near my bookshelves and he said there's a huge spider and he's trying to get it and it's in my books it's near the books and uh, get you a man that will help you out with a spider situation that's all i'm saying the cats are useless the cats do not help but anyway i'll show you <laughs> So it's down here somewhere where all my like unhauled, well to be unhauled books are and like I don't really care about those so it's fine but oh what if it's what if it's on the sofa what if it's on the sofa it's not it ran into there it ran into the box and I've killed that bit so if it comes out there we'll see it I've mm. got its exit covered okay I mean I think we should, should set all your books on fire no Massey we're not setting all our books on fire. You're gonna have to pull them all out, aren't you? Yeah, I don't really want to put my hand in there, though. Are you scared? scared. Are you scared of spiders? But why do we have magic wand? Why are you using my wand? What are you using my wand for? You're just gonna jab at it. Found the little fucker. You found it? Yes. Oh, <gasps> that's huge! Are you kidding me? Look at that monstrosity! I can't really see it, but it's got such beefy legs. It has not skipped leg day. All right, well, I'm going to leave you to it. Oh, <laughs> the cat is there. See, it's got too Ooh. many wires next to it. It's so big. It looks small. Oh, my God, it's moving. <laughs> no, that was the shadow of its legs. I know, I know. It's big, beefy legs. Oh, it's moving. It's not moving at all. It moved. It when I do my shadow like that. No, it moved. Okay, my phone died, but crisis averted. <laughs> I managed to stop Massey from trying to um, jab it with my wand. I also managed to keep the cats away from it, and we scooped it up with a cone. One of one a cone, a hat, a party hat. <laughs> So, not just a prop from a wheel of TBR, also a good spider catching, <laughs> a spider scooper, I don't know. So, so Mr. Fats is fine. Um, we managed to get it in here um, with like another piece of card underneath and we put it on the windowsill, like outside of the flat, obviously. <laughs> so it's okay. Um, but now I just kind of keep like looking up at my ceiling to see if there's any spiders because like usually if I see a spider it's like up on the ceiling and my floor like I'm all like on edge a little bit um t like tick like itchy like I feel like they're on me are they on me <laughs> anyway <laughs> it's pretty late now it's like midnight so I'm just gonna read this for about half an hour ish um so I don't expect to get very far into it um but I'll give you my thoughts like first thoughts on it tomorrow because yeah, I need to go to bed, but I swear I'm probably going to have, like, nightmares about spiders. It wasn't, I, I watched this back. <laughs> well, the clip's back. I know it wasn't that big, okay? In person, it was huge, all right? Like, trust me, okay? <laughs> I'm going to read, then I'm going to go to bed. Hey, y'all, it's now the next day. It's Monday, and I completely lied. <laughs> I didn't read any of this last night. Well, I tried the first, like, few pages, and I was like, okay, I think I'm too tired to comprehend this. So I'm just gonna pick this up today instead, later on. It's actually kind of late in the day. Oh yeah, also, the reason I'm wearing scrunchies. <laughs> I just filmed my fairly unboxing. It's what? September the 16th. <laughs> and it's the August box. I have had this in my flat for like a week, but I've just, you know, been depressed. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't film it as well because it's like a video you can't refilm because I want to get like my immediate like excitement and reaction on film. So yeah, it's taken me a while to get that filmed. Oh, hopefully that should be going up as well before this vlog if it all goes according to plan. So I'll link it in the description if you want to see. But yeah, I got I got some scrunchies. I'm now a visco girl. Like Anna, oop, save the turtles. <laughs> Wait, you don't have a scrunchie? Oh, <laughs> that went totally wrong. <laughs> But these are one of the items that were included. Oh my god, this box was so good. Obviously, I won't show you everything, but like, y'all, they, oh, this ring light is not doing this justice. But this was included, and it's a Miss Born inspired metal bookmark. And oh my god, I love it. I've never, this is probably the best item, like my favourite item I've ever received in a book box, probably because it's Miss Born inspired, and you know, that's my favourite series. So, oh, this is just absolutely stunning, though. And yeah, between. G's bookmark she created for the magical readathon and this one like I am converted dog earring we don't know her <laughs> but 
But anyway, I'm gonna go do what I need to do, and then once I read, I will let you know. Save the turtles. Esk, 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 oh, esk, esk, esk. I can't do it, okay? I'm too old for TikTok. I know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. All right, yeah. That was cringy. I'm gonna go do the stuff. Let you know my thoughts on this when I actually pick it up. Hello, it's Tuesday. I need to wrap this vlog up because I have imported all the footage into my laptop for this vlog and there's like two bloody hours. Love that for me. Oh, editing this is gonna be a task. It's gonna be my Everest. <laughs> like how as well? It's not even a full week's vlog. I am just, I just, oh. Books fell somewhere in the room. It's a sound I'm used to at this point. I really need to do a fucking unhaul. But yeah, this was another super rambly vlog. But anyway, I didn't read that much of this yesterday. I read the first 50 pages. So it was almost like a prequel. I do not know how to explain what's happening yet because we've had like three different storylines and different timelines, just little sections told in different ways. Through different media, we have the story of two friends, I'd say. Um, one of them dies from cancer, so that was a little bit bleak to begin with. And then we've also had um, a lot of swearing on these pages from some characters who are really into hunting. And then we had like a, some dialogue between two characters and it was set 243,240, no? 240, 2,430, a long fucking time ago. <laughs> So I don't know what's going on yet, but yeah, I've made it to literally just the beginning of this book is 50 pages in. It didn't take me long to read last night, but I'm just on the first part. One rainy day in May. Like I love all the illustrations in here. Excuse Bella's, Bella's tail because she always needs my attention. And now, and that's like how it begins. It says, is everything okay? A question I ask myself all the time. And then we are finally getting into the bulk of the story here. So in next week's vlog, I will tell you more about this when I know what actually is happening. I feel like it's going to be a lot of different characters and a lot of different scenarios and they're all going to intertwine. So I'll let you know in next week's vlog, but I'm excited to carry on with that. So I've done okay in terms of reading. I haven't read a lot this weekend, but I did get some books read. So that's good. Firstly, Dark Dawn by Jay Crystal. Off. still conflicted as to whether it's a 4.5 4.75 or 5 because you saw my reaction I loved this there was so many amazing epic parts in this I was talking to Bobby about this a lot last night as well and we both agree the ending was a little bit rushed and I didn't love how um, the epilogue went but I get it it's fine I understand why it was done and it was done it was done well let's be real in my opinion and of course I absolutely love Mia and I'm just so sad that this series has ended I may just up this to a five star because there was parts of this where my jaw was literally on the floor I was on the edge of my seat I did have that connection with it but just that the ending dude I don't know um, same goes for House of Salt and Sorrows I, I was really pleasantly surprised by this I expected to like it but I didn't expect it to like love it as much as I did um like I said probably a 4.75 again I'm being super picky this one I didn't love as much as this one but oh my god the creepy vibes in this were amazing again the ending in this was pretty rushed though um but you saw my reaction like before I'd finished it I was 40, 40 pages away from finishing it and I was like oh I didn't like the reveal but this was cleverly done towards the end, but it does go from like zero to 100 real quick in those last, sorry, Matthew just rang me and that's the problem with vlogging on your phone. But yeah, this went from zero to 100 in the last 40 pages, as did this one kind of. So 4.75, if I'm being extra picky, I may just round them up to five star reads. These were really, really enjoyable. I'm so happy I read them. Also, this week I started the audiobook for I'll Be Gone in the Dark, loving it so far. I have only listened to like, an hour, an hour and a half. So I may switch to reading it physically for a little bit just so I can retain it a bit better because my brain just hasn't been jiving with audiobooks all that well even though this audiobook is good like the narration is really really good I know this is going to be more of like a memoir for Michelle McNamara as well as a true crime story so I'm excited to see how this unfolds and then just to dive into all the articles and things on Google about this one too excited and then of course I've started this one and another exciting one. So yeah, I'm reading some really good books this month. I'm excited for everything that yet, that's yet to come. <laughs> so that's this week's vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's rambling all over the place as always, but you know, 
it's what you it's what you expect when you come over here so thank you for watching and hanging out with me please do chat with me in the comments if you'd like to I'd like to know how you are I hope you're doing all kinds of well do let me know your thoughts on these books and yeah that's it for this week I need to wrap it up because I was gonna try and keep this brief but pfft, I, I can't ever do that apparently <laughs> so please like and subscribe if you care to do so and you haven't already and I will catch you in the next one my dudes bye y'all put your hand